A chatbot is a glorified tape recorder. It takes snippets of what's on the web created by a human, splices them together, and passes it off as if it created these things. And people are saying, oh my God, it's a human. It's human like. The chatbot simply rearranges what's ever on the internet already. It's a tape recorder of a very advanced type. A new technology has arrived that will apparently break the internet. Quantum computing. A new era is dawning. A realm where computers harness the strange and wondrous laws of quantum mechanics to perform calculations beyond the scope of classical computers. Silicon Valley could become a rust belt unless they get on the bandwagon. You know, in a five to ten year time frame, quantum computing will break encryption as we know it today. Welcome to Lab 360, it's time to explore. By the end of the video we hope you will have enough information to understand about quantum computing and how it will be useful in your future. But, before we get into the complexity of quantum computing, let's cover the basics. The human civilization has gone through two stages of computer revolution. The first stage laid the foundation for the computer revolution with devices like the abacus and mechanical calculators. But the analog computer by Charles Babbage changed everything, this machine had the power to calculate navigation charts, interest rates on a large scale and even the motion of the moon. Unfortunately, this machine was left unfinished due to insufficient funding. But the real push came during World War II, when the Nazis were using a device called Enigma, one of the most advanced coding machines of its time, which was used to communicate by the Germans to pass information. And as necessity is the mother of invention, Alan Turing was recruited to set up a group that could crack the Enigma code. And they were successful in doing so, which led to the end of World War II in 1945, saving thousands of lives. And on this design we have built the modern computer, everything we use today is based on this machine, even the device in front of your eyes. Before moving on, here is some information that will blow your mind. In 1901, off the coast of Greece, we found a weird dirty device in a shipwreck in the Mediterranean Sea, when it was dated, the device seemed 2000 years old. After cleaning it up, they were shocked to discover that it was a computer. This device was capable of calculating the motion of Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. It could also predict eclipses, 2000 years ago. We don't know who made this device and where it came from, but we know one thing for sure, that humans have always wanted to calculate. From the distance to the stars, to the economy, to understanding biology, and medicine, but more importantly, it was our first attempt to understand the universe. Now coming back to the invention brought by Alan Turing, how does it work? Everything comes down to bits. Bits are made from pieces of silicon, with tens of thousands and millions of them in your computer. They can be in the state of zero or one. Namely the ground state, an excited state. So, everything you type on your computer is translated into computer speech, which is binary. And we can have a billion of them on your fingernail, making the computer revolution a reality today. But now we have reached the peak of Moore's law. Moore's law says that every 18 months the computational power doubles. If we look at the chart over the years, the line has kept going high, but now it has started to flatten. The reason behind this being, that the transistors have become so small they are approaching the size of atoms. Here, leakage occurs, where we don't know where the electron is anymore because of the quantum principle. After World War II, Richard Feynman predicted the end of the second era. Moore's law and digital computers will collapse, and we will have to go to the next level. The next level being the atom. He proposed a machine that would operate on atoms and not on transistors. He called it the ultimate computer. AKA the quantum computer. Quantum computers are not your daily laptops and computers, they are much more. They are not meant to solve traditional problems by traditional computers, instead solve problems that traditional computers cannot. Unlike traditional computers, quantum computers function on qubits. Qubits aren't a one or a zero, they are more complex. Imagine it as a wave, a qubit can likely be a zero, which means a lower energy, or it can be a one, which means a higher energy wave. But in quantum computing, all waves are working together, 
which can be a constructive wave, or a destructive one. To put things in simple words, quantum computing calculates things differently, which makes them good at different things, especially at finding structure in tons of data. One part of quantum computing is simulating nature. Because nature obeys quantum physics. But Mother Nature would laugh at us because Mother Nature does not use zeros and ones, zeros and ones. Mother Nature computes on electrons, electron waves, waves that create molecules. Our eyes cannot see it, but if you look at a molecular level, the atomic structure of molecules, everything follows the laws of quantum physics. For instance, for anything that has tons of data, like developing new battery technology, or even creating new material on a molecular level, we'll need a quantum computer. While creating new objects on a quantum scale is amazing, there is another side to it. Quantum computing can easily break encryptions. The first algorithm developed for quantum computing is Shor's algorithm, developed by Peter Shor. The algorithm can basically find factors, prime factors for really large numbers. Apparently, that's the basis for RSA encryption. In 1977, three scientists Ron Rivest, Adi Shamir, Leonard Adelman came up with an encryption breakthrough called RSA based on their initials. This encryption is so hard to break that even the best-known factoring algorithm, the general number field SIV, would take 16 million years to crack it. That's next to impossible. But, not on a quantum computer, a quantum computer could crack it in a couple of days or hours. So that's the problem, the RSA is the foundation of nearly all the public key cryptography we use today. Therefore, everyone is racing towards it, can anybody who solves this will have a big advantage. But this requires millions of qubits, and currently with the IBM's Osprey, we are at 433 qubits. Once we develop this technology, we are going to discover new applications that haven't been considered. In the end, the world is quantum mechanical. Two years ago, we achieved partial quantum supremacy. Quantum supremacy is when a quantum computer can beat an ordinary computer in a task. The next step is when a quantum computer can outperform an ordinary computer at any task. The nation that attains complete quantum supremacy will dominate the world, because they will be able to calculate interest rates, investments, and business activity. Simply put, they will control the world economy. Just like nature, there are different types of quantum processes. Different companies are using different methods to do quantum computing, IBM and Google are using super cooling devices that look like chandeliers, kept at the temperature of 15 millikelvins, that's the coldest temperature in the universe. Whereas the Chinese are using light beams, just like plants doing photosynthesis. We are all racing towards the same destination with different modes, who will get there first? Let us know in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe to Lab360, because together, we will explore.